Okay, so this is the battery. Um, I have a setup here where I have um, cables that use these and these so that I can switch out whatever I want to use. These hobby connectors are pretty cheap, solder them on. So, and then I'll put them in between here. So right now, we're looking at what this pole I'll receive. This battery cracks me up. Um, it's funny stuff. It says, do not short circuit, crush, mutilate, reverse polarity, or disassemble or dispose of in a tire. It really does say a tire. Way to go, China. So, what's nice though is if I can flip it around again. Um, let me show you guys really, just really quick. So, we got that there that yeah. unplugs. We got that there that unplugs. And then we got that there that unplugs. So, if you don't want to run a fuse, you don't need to the way I have this. And then I have multiple settings, so like if I don't want to run the Yesu plug, I can run the old one and just put it on here. So I make mine like that. And then like if you want to run really minimal and don't care about fuses, you can do that if you want to risk it. So I just thought I'd show you guys that. Um, so we're going to do some tests with this battery. And this is these common hobby connectors called Deans. They actually will handle quite a few amps, but um, for our purposes, I'm pretty sure they're more than adequate. So, let's see here. And it's marked load and source. I'll put a link to this if you guys want to buy it. Um, these are quite cheap. They sell the same thing for five times the price on Ham Radio Outlet's website with the PowerWorks name on it. Um, I have no idea why anybody would actually um, buy those, to be honest. So, let's see. Okay. So we got that there. We can read it. So, it started at 13 something. Let's turn the radio off and see what it raises to. Yeah, so... It's idly sitting above 13. And I have not charged this battery or done anything with it yet. Um, these batteries are $19. You can't even begin to build a pack for that price. So $40 you could buy two of these and um, run a regular HF radio like this, probably full power for an hour. Um, this one here is on their thing here they tell my they tell me that this one is the smallest one they sell it will do six amps continuous and um, where is it max where's it at where's it at um, it will do up to 20 amps for three seconds so these other ones, if you buy the um, 15 amp battery, which I haven't seen on their thing, but uh, it'll do up to 40 amps for three seconds, less than three seconds it says. Um, you get the 30 amp battery, it'll do 30 amps continuous and uh, 60 amps. So the 30 amp battery, um, I can't remember uh, what it was, but uh, I think the 15 amp battery is about $40. So anyway, with these here, you can buy these batteries for a quarter of the price of what Ham Radio Outlet is selling, the BioNO batteries. I mean, it's probably the same thing. It's probably the same quality. You need to get their little goofy uh, trickle charger, which, you know, is a waste. It takes two hours to recharge this battery with their trickle charger. What you ideally want to do is have this thing out in the field and have a small, I don't know, 10 to 50 watt solar panel hooked to it and, and then basically you just keep it topped off while you're using the radio and let the panel do a lot of the work. So let's turn the radio back on. Um, 
I gotta look at my tuner here. Oh wait, bypass. Sorry, tired. So I'd guess that I'd probably be tuned for eighty. So let's see if I am or not. Um, I'm not going to be able to read anything on this SSWR meter because it's going to be ridiculous. Test 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Hello, 1, 2, 3, 4. I do have SWR. So without actually hooking it to one of my other radios because the problem with this radio is the SWR meter doesn't read right. It reads good when it's really bad and it reads good when it's good. But then if it's bad, sometimes it reads bad. But I don't know where the hell I'm tuned for to be honest with you. Um, I think I might actually be tuned for 10 meters. Um, I don't generally use the tuner except for when I run the amplifier. Test 1, 2, 3, 4. Look at that, shut right off. <coughs> and I bet you it does it again. So, um, it's most likely um, RF related. So, um, let me pause the video and check and see where I'm at. This doesn't have like an SWR scanner. So it confirmed with the other way, uh, radio on 28387, somewhere around there. Um, it's uh, flat. I have a feeling it will turn off. And I, I really don't know what the reason is why, but I've seen this before. Um, I'm not sure if it's because, like, my match really isn't what I think it is. Um, so, what I can do is probably just go ahead and try something that's not going through a tuner. And... That would be the CW part of the 80 meter band. And uh, so this this radio doesn't like something. And now it's not doing it. Test. Yeah. So. I literally ran the 756 Pro on this battery. But this is why you need to know these kind of things before you go and go out in the field. Not all radios are tolerant of lower voltage. Um, and I don't know if that's the particular reason why this one is doing this. Um, so let me do some checking and I will come back. Okay. So, we're testing right now. We are drawing 3.8 amps at 12.6 volts, which means that we're not putting out much power. I am looking over at my watt meter. I see a couple of uh, watts. And we do have a flat match to the tuner. So, this is not working, but it's not shutting down. So what we need to do now, we know that the processor is on, okay, but I'm going to see if I can get in here and just turn that off. I can't remember where it is. Okay, right there. Test one, two, three, four. And the radio thinks that I have a high SWR, so it is folding back power. Is what I think. I could be wrong. Um, I'm sorry. I have this completely wrong. So we're on the CW part. 
we are tuned to about that frequency, but up near 3.8. So, 3.855 was what I tuned it to. Hello. Now, that's really strange because now it just wants to shut down. So, the tuner looks good. Um, the antenna is not resonant here without the tuner. And this thing, it is like, so I think if you're going to the menu, I just think you can't do 100 watts on this radio with this battery. I just think that that's one of the reasons why I think this is not really a good portable radio. So right here, or you see this SSB BFO, that's where you would have to go to change anything. Okay. And we have a... Uh, I'm looking for the power settings. This radio is really a pain in the ass. AM, AM. We definitely went past it. Okay. There's more than one setting. <coughs> Let's set it to 20. So now I've tried something strange. I turned it down to 20 on sideband and it didn't, it just did the same thing. Test one, two, three, four, KG, so many sure. Test, test, test. I'm on AM. I am putting out a few watts. I don't have any reflected. I don't have any reflected on the radio. It's working just fine. I have no idea why the hell that would be. It's not shutting down. Hello, one, two, three, four. I'm drawing uh, six amps, six amps. So the radio is probably rated at 20 watts on AM and about a quarter of a 100 watt scale. So let's try something else. So we'll try FM, which should put out a ton of power and it should make the radio shut down. Um, FM, I am drawing 8.7 watts. The radio shows no SWR. I see about 50 watts on my Heathkit tuner that's going to be RMS power. So it's doing about 50 watts on FM um, because our battery voltage has sagged to 11.8. Um, why in the hell will this not work on sideband is beyond me. So that's kind of a test of this particular radio. Um, I don't really know that this is a good field portable radio with batteries. I've used it in the past with lead acid batteries and I've had problems too. So I've used a battery that would be double the size of this, like a backup battery. Um, I've had problems. It's uh, it's really strange. So now we go up to RTTY and we're pulling 9 amps, I'm seeing 50 watts. It's not shutting down. Okay. Alright, back to sideband. Test 1, 2, 3, 4, and now it decides it wants to work. It's not doing anything weird, it's pulling 5 amps, and I can see about 50 watts on peaks. That is very strange. So, it's possible that there is a problem in my rig here with maybe these connections or something like this. Maybe there's a problem in this radio. It came from an operator that abuses the crap out of this radio. He hooked up an SB220 directly to the uh, keying port. Um, <clears throat> I think he also 
Um, yeah, I think he also did the, um, uh, he had a lightning strike. And he also, Mars modified the radio and he didn't do it correctly. And just blobbed a bunch of solder in there. And um, we undid the Mars mod that he did on it, but I'm not really sure because the internals of this radio look a little bit different than most of the other ones. So um, basically, I just undid everything, but it's still unlocked. Uh, and I can't find a radio that looks the same as this one on the inside. So there's some solder pads and he um, also damaged the attenuator resistor which was replaced. That's a common problem on these in the 991As so that's not like anything out of the ordinary but um, the fact that the SWR meter doesn't work right and some other things um, if the SWR is reading higher, high it's going to go into a fold back. Um, so this radio here I, I mean is a, it probably a bad example. So Anyway, what I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and shut this radio down and I'm going to pull the G90 out of this box.